guys, it's Emmanuel here, the Enthusiastic Coder, and today I have an amazing series. First time I'm saying that in like a long time, and I'm so happy to do this because, yeah, it's a series. And basically in this series, I'm going to show you how you can make your own catching game, but a whole lot better than a simple catching game. So roll the pre-roll. <laughs> so basically when you get into the game, you get this, so you get the title here, and then you get the score of the thing, of the game, and then you get this button, and then when you click it, you can move it around. And it actually makes sounds, but I'm just recording it from two screens, so it won't hear this, you won't hear the sound. But yeah, basically there's two different types of apples, and the score increases over here. <laughs> and yeah, it's really cool. And you can use the arrow keys or you can use WASD. And that's basically the entire game. And yeah, that was the pre roll. I'm like literally so surprised that I could do that. And you can make it too if you listen to these instructions. <laughs> so yeah, it's a two part episode. Two or three parts i think it's two parts but yeah it's really simple it's really fast it has an ending unlike the learning scratch part but like yes it's really cool and it's really informative so yeah please like and subscribe if you want to and let's get into the video basically in this video i'm going to show you how you can make all of these sprites and all of these backgrounds and the basic um gui and stuff like that and yeah let's get into it okay so basically we'll start with a new project and first of all we need to name it so i will name this catching game you can name it anything you want but um i'm just naming it catching game because <laughs> you're catching apples so in game and also i wanted to say the reason why this looks a bit different it's not drastically different but um the actual working area for coding is like a bit smaller it's just because i'm using a second monitor so yeah the so first things first when we want to start we need to get all the sprites working so we don't need to really use a scratch cat so we can just take this and then we can just delete this i won't really go over like what everything does if you want to do that, I can put the link down below for my learning scratch video where I show you everything about that. So you can watch that if you don't know things about this. The first things first, a direct reference. You can use that apple from here. Okay, um, this one. You can use this one if you want. I didn't use this one because I wanted to save it for the splash screen or the U1 screen. And I wanted to save it for that. But you can do whatever you want, honestly. So um, I'll just do mine. I use this apple for reference. I'll just speed up the making apple process. Okay, so basically I have it and I finished it. It doesn't look exactly like how I did it, how I showed it to you in the preview, but if you really want to see exactly how I did mine, then the actual things, the coordinates are right here. But also, um, I can just tell you right now the basic shape of it. So you just need the actual stem. I think this is the stem. <laughs> <laughs> how do i not know i'm not sure what this is but you need the brown part and basically it's just a long rectangle and then you'll add the line which is kind of like the downhill part <laughs> to where the root goes into and then this is just like filled in red and then this is just the white part to show the reflectance and yeah that's basically how i did the apple if you want to see how I do the golden apple, basically take this, take this here, delete this, and then duplicate this. And then I'll just change this to golden apple so that I don't forget. Golden apple. 
and then it'll change here and then basically I'll zoom in yeah. oh, okay. and then I'll click this and then I'll take this and then I'll change the color so you want this to be like this so basically it's just yellow there is no gold well it's not like directly gold but this is it's basically just a yellow so if you want it to look a bit more like gold take the brightness and make it less bright um and then make it less saturated and then take the color and make it look more orange okay why is it not doing that sorry yeah, I'll make it darker and make it a bit less saturated. Ugh. What is happening? <laughs> okay, but basically, yeah, that's how you can make your golden apple. I'll also show you how I did mine. It's basically the exact same thing, but you just changed color. Okay, so now the next part is the basket. I'll just duplicate it, and then I will just delete this. And then delete this as well. Okay, cool. So I'll zoom in. And essentially what I did to get my basket. Well, I just took a circle and then made it into like an oval. Kind of like this. And then I fold it in. You can make the basket whatever you want, honestly. That's the really fun part about this. Um, where is it? It's basically just a brown. Uh, and then turn the brightness up. Okay, I don't want to waste your time, so I'll just go a bit quicker than usual. Just save your project. I, it automatically saved it for me. Okay. So yeah, just always save it, because if it deletes, there's no recovery file. <laughs> but yeah, so it's basically just an oval and then another oval on top of that oval, which is smaller than the oval. It can overlap, it should overlap, and it should be a bit smaller than it. And it is fine if there's, it's not completely in line with the black bar. You'll use an arrow to do this, and then you'll darken it. And basically it has to be darker than this outer one. Reason being is that it makes it look realistic. So it'll make it look like it's actually something in the inside and that there's actually an apple that could go in so basically i'm not trying to make it too realistic where there's shading and stuff and apples aren't gonna fill as more come in it's just supposed to look decent so that's how you'll do that out um, the basket we can rename this to basket boom and then the next sprite is or also Take this away, you can just know that you can take this and delete it if you don't want to use this. Same thing applies here. If you want to make this gold and then you just change the color for to yellow. Okay, then the next one is the splash screen. I'll just duplicate this and then change it to U1. I don't know why I say splash screen, but okay, enter. And then we'll go here. We can delete this. Now what I did for this is I deleted it. And then I just used the text. You can use whatever font you want. It just changes the font. I'll do marker. And let me, I'll just show you right here what I used. What font I used. But basically I'll just say you on. And I used brown for it because brown gave it kind of like that nature look. And that. <laughs> um, make it orange, then turn it to brown. Boom. Okay, yeah. And then I took apples and then. Apples. Oh, uh, whoopsie. Uh, I meant to do this. And I took the apple sprite. 
Let me just zoom out. Is this apple not going here? Fine, then I have to do this. So I took this, Control C, and then I Control V'd it here. Perfect. I'm gonna zoom this in a bit, and then shrink this. And then when you shrink it, then you just basically put it in line with the text. I'm doing this really quickly, but then all together, I will make it a bit faster. It up a lot. So basically, that's this um, the U1 screen. And then now, going into the last part, which is the play button, which is really easy to do. I'll just take this Apple one and then change it to play button. And then it's just, it's really, really simple. I used a button for one of my learning scratch videos. It's just a circle. And to make it nice, you can put another circle. But because it's not exactly like an actual real life button, you don't need another one. And the circle just makes, the outer circle just fakes depth. You don't really need it. I make mine green because um, that's what I usually think of play, because play and green's like go, so can't see it because the button's green, the letter's green. Okay, but now it's black. And then like this, and yeah, that's basically all of the sprouts. I'm gonna need to it up, and then I'm gonna get back to you. Okay, so basically <coughs> I've lined up all the sprites and now they look more better than before. No, better than before. So um, I'm just keeping to this kind of style um, because I want to show you how it is when you do, if you do use this. But the thing to notice is that this and there are like some other stuff like this and that and they're kind of like more um, harder to separate and to control all together than something that's grouped all together or like making your own one so just to know that that you control everything if you want to paste it like i was doing in the time apps okay so now to actually size it because this is not all completely accurate so rather than having to size it on the costumes like the costumes editor you can basically just change the size so we know this and this is a hundred it's fine if it's the size you can choose how big you want it to be but I want this basket to be bigger than the actual apples itself so it looks a bit realistic so then I'll make it let's say 300 okay that's really really big Keep in mind, the bigger you make it, the less space the player has to catch the apples, but the bigger the hitbox is. So keep that in mind. 200. Okay, that seems a bit more possible. 150. Okay, that's a bit, that's a lot better actually. Okay, I'll keep it like this. Also, just remember if this is like this long, and the outer circle is this long, then the the basket will look a lot more wider. But if you make the oval a lot smaller, then it will look less wider. So it'll look like the view of it different, like in the preview I showed you. <laughs> this is really a lot of information. But yeah, okay. So we'll change the size from 100 to um, 500. Because we want this to be so much bigger. Now it can't fit. 
Uh, I'll keep it like that. So this is the U1 page, and then the play button needs to be a lot bigger. 300. Okay, now last part, we need to get into the backgrounds and making them. Okay, so basically I just had to like go to the desktop version of Scratch because something happened and I had to use this. So always remember to download your projects. Okay, so we're going to the backdrops and then we'll only need two. But the thing is that the second backdrop, you won't even have to do anything on it. We'll just use blue sky. And this is basically the backdrop where the apples will be falling down from. So you can make whatever you want. I just made it this one because it looks natural. <laughs> okay. Also, comment down below if you want me to make a comparison between the desktop version and the website version. <laughs> okay, cool. So for backdrop one, it's very simple what I did. It looks complicated, I suppose, but not really. So first things first is we need to start with a thing that will fill the entire page. So I just like to stay safe, stay safe and make it bigger than it actually is. You'll see that there's white bars, faint white bars, which represent what you can see. So you can see this whole thing is actually um well okay this there's something there i'll fix that later but back to this so you can make whatever color you want the way i did it was that there was like a blue and then it was kind of like a purple fading in so if you want to do that essentially just go here to this and then you can pick any one of these four so I'll just do this so that it goes up and down. Then you get to choose which two colors you want. I'll do green or this, like a dark green. Okay, I need to actually click this. So I want it going up and down. So for this, I'll make this a darker green. So you can see how it fades and it's really cool. So that's basically how you can do like basic shading and like, um, no, basic gradients. Yes. <laughs> okay, so backdrop one, this is basically what you'll see from the beginning. And then the second one is basically what you'll be seeing for most of the game. And if you want to add those trees, then you'll just go here. Um, not add a backdrop. You'll go add this, and then you'll go to tree, tree 1, because tree 1 looks realistic. You'll go here, you can control C, and then you can go back here, and then you can control V, and then so they can see it. And then you'll make it bigger than, well, than it actually is. And I'll just do this. Cool. Okay, the greens don't really contrast well with each other, but I just did that to show that you can actually do something else. Um, okay. Take this. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of copying and pasting. Ooh. And control V. Okay, I'll polish it up for the next video on this. And basically, the text it's just normal text catching game or catch the fruit. You really make it whatever you want, honestly. And then I just make this bigger by stretching it. I'll need to delete this tree. 
and it looks very messy here but when we start actually coding it it'll be a lot a lot better and yeah that's the entire video that was really cool that was part one of the two-part series where i basically show you how to make your own catching game with apples <laughs> so it was very cool um, I'm not used to it at all, like, I felt like I was doing so many wrong things because, like, it was so long and, like, I felt so tired afterwards, but, yeah, comment down below if there would be something that you would want me to do, just so that you know, because I'm open for suggestions, yeah, <laughs> if you like the video, please like and subscribe if you want to, and remember, have a good day, peace.